Shout out to Coppish. Shout out to keep Coppish, up, guys. The, good work the two up. legends, Emil Heskey, Howard, Howard Gell. Can't get much better than that, guys. Yeah. You know what to do now. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm with legends, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
head that, bro. You know I mean? you, you yeah, I, I get his side of it. Oh, 100%. You, you, yeah, yeah. You, you, you got something to add to the team on the pitch. You, you can't hang around to babysit or to, to be um, assistant manager, bro. So I, I, at some point as a player, you don't want to be hearing that, oh, we need you for everything but football. That, that's that's not that's not what you're here for. You know, you don't be paid for that. You want to play. Mm. No, I get that. That's why I've said I would never be angry at him for wanting to go. Mm. Never. Never, ever. Kojo, if Hendo goes, obviously the captain's vacancy becomes available. From the current squad, who would you want to see as captain? Because I think this is a real big talking point right now. No one, I don't think there's a universal answer amongst the fan base. Whereas when Hendo became the captain, there was a universal. Everyone said, what Gerard's going, captain's got to be Hendo now. Who do you think, or who in your opinion, would you like to see be the captain? I think um, Trent Alexander-Arnold. And the reason why I say Trent, yeah, is because that last that last month of football, it's like I really, he, he went up in my estimation even more than he was before. Just in, the, just in what he's been through and to come back through that and deliver what he's done in this new sort of pivot position or whatever. And I feel like, this is the moment to think about the next 10 years. This isn't a moment to think about the next two years in terms of like a Van Dyke or whatever. Van Dyke's going to be gone soon, right? I feel like that rhythm needs to start from now for the next 10 years. And our, and our captain, for me, he, he's been through it. He's a winner. Do you know what I mean? He's won stuff. And I and I like the development of, of his character off the pitch as well. And he, he he's proven that he can take adversity and come back from it. And that's the kind of person that I want as a captain. And I think his ability on the pitch as well, he leads by example. And I think he's still young, but he's got so much, but he's not even in his prime years yet. And I feel like for me personally, the Liverpool fans would love him to be captain because he's one of their own, obviously. But I just feel like we've got to think the next 10 years and, and for the captain, not the next two. So I'd go with Trent. Very fair points. I mean, you say he's young, but remember, Gerard took on the captain's arm banner around 23, 24 as well. And he never looked back and, in my opinion, became, in my opinion, the best captain I've seen in my lifetime for Liverpool, Henderson being second. Do you think, though, with the adversity Trent's gone through, with the fact of the amount of criticism he gets, etc., the fact that he's not the most experienced player in our team and all of those things and the pressure that would come with that that title, do you think it could be too much too soon, despite his age? I feel like you've got to allow him... You've got to test him. He's been tested. He's gone through criticism and coming out in and out of England squad and they don't know where to play him. Mm. And for me, he's come through all of that. And I feel like... I genuinely feel like... We need... We need a captain that's from Liverpool. He's come through the youth system. He understands the club in and out from a global perspective. Mm. I, I think it, it just takes all the boxes. He's a handsome boy. He, you know, he's just cut that ridiculous Ziggy I'm... Mark thing that he had. <laughs> 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 Kelly, all of that was affected his football. It was like, yeah. I said, well, he won with this haircut. He won a lot of things with his haircut. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So for me, I, for me, Trent makes so many, so much sense. I think he ticks a lot of boxes, and I, I would love him to be Liverpool's new captain. I think what I learned about captains over the years is we've got many leaders in our team. Do you see what I'm trying to say? And, and 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 just because you're captain doesn't stop everyone else from talking. But I just think in terms of like the the, the model image for the club and where we're trying to go forward, he's going to be a very integral part in that. Let's let, let's have it right. There's not I, I, regardless of whether he's been playing well or not. There's not many people that I'd still pick over him. Do you see what I'm trying to say for his ability? So, yeah, man, I, I, I think Trent is the perfect perfect one. What do you not think? I I've mean, never thought about the longevity thing. I'm that's actually going to say, yeah, like, actually yeah, put me in a different like, mind frame. Because, yeah, I, I'd never thought about it like that. Yeah. I'd always just thought who would be best now. That's why my pick would probably be Mo or Robertson, because I think they're both leaders for their country. And I think they're the most influential people in our team who perform. Most consistent, I guess, would be to put it. Well, I think those two have been pretty much our most consistent players who are in this squad now, apart from Allison. But you know, I feel like I don't like goalies being captains. There's something about being that far away from the action that I don't like. Um, 
But yeah, now nah, I've never thought about the longevity for real because Mo could go next year, Robo might not be in the team next year, then all of a sudden for another captain again within 12 months. So I've never thought about the longevity. I haven't, real talk. I mean, Odegaard's got it at Arsenal and he's only been there a little while and they gave it to him and they didn't care and he's only, what, 22 or something like that? I spoke to Rio once, yeah? Um, and <clears throat> Rio said he was always the captain at Man United, but they gave it to Evra to boost his confidence a bit. And giving him responsibility helped Evra in that time. But Rio was always the guy. Mm. And I thought the armband is a symbol of the face of the, 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 the you know, the, the team. And it takes, um, you know, and, um, and branding and all the other stuff. You look at Jack Grealish, for example. Do you know what I mean? I don't think he's... But he, uh, it wouldn't shock me if he was a Man City captain for, for, for many other reasons. And I think from the global appeal of the club, Trent's the face. Trent's going to be the face. It's not going to be Mo. It's not going to be Van Dijk. You know, they're going to be gone soon. If Mo left next season to go to Saudi Arabia, like, we'd have to do it all again. And I think if we're mm. talking about transfers that make sense for the next five years, we've also got to be thinking about a captain that makes sense for the next five to ten years. Mm. No, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, Kojo. You, you have changed my mindset on it. Like I never, I'm not, I'm, I'm drift here. Never thought about the longevity aspect. I was very much of the case of next year, next two years, stability. But if you can get long term stability, someone who's, as you said, been at the club, been at the highest level. Yeah, I think we've got to start putting na Trent's name in the in the hat for it. If I'm going to be honest. So the only thing that's mad about it though is there were a lot of people questioning his effort and that season, last season and his attitude. Can that person be a captain if people think he doesn't have attitude? You know what I mean? It's like a, I don't know, like, it, it, does it correlate? That's the only thing I'd be a bit worried about on that one. I, I, I would say to that, that, um, you know, my mum, my mum used to say, um, don't judge anything that's still in motion. You see what I'm trying to say? And as football fans, we can be very, our relationship with football and our team is very much, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. <laughs> But, but 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 if you ask me, if you ask the question, what have you done for me? He's won five trophies, bro. At, at one point, we were saying he's the best in the world. At one mm. point, he's still young. All these things are going for him, not going against him. You mm. see what I'm trying to say? So for me, yeah, yeah, I, I think he's proven that adversity will come. He, he might dip his head low like many of us would, but it's about what you do afterwards. And I think the last seven games... And um, of the season where he was, you know, in that midfield, and now he's playing for England, and now he's scoring screamers. Do you know what I mean? He's he's, he's got a new barber in town. Come on, man! Like <laughs> oh man, bro! If Jordan can do it. I'm sorry, if Jordan Henderson can do it. He can do it. He can do it, man. Staying staying on Trent for a sec. So uh, you watch us a lot, and you you know me and Jeff go back and forth. Man, that's why. Get me next count. <laughs> <laughs> where would you play Trent because I think Drift makes a good point there but I think we saw an attitude change when Trent started playing in midfield where would you play Trent would you keep him at right back would you have him inverted or would you move him into midfield you called him Dredge by the way just then do I call him Drench Dredge Dread. Dread. Yeah, because it's still in my mind. Remember, I told you I was going to get dread because of Trent, but now he's cut off. I don't know what to do. <laughs> where would I? Where would I play Trent? Um, I think that's a tough one. I personally think he's he's probably going to play right back still, but in that role that he had last last season, where they'll they'll pack the midfield. Um, I love I loved Kanate. I think Kanate grew even more when he had to cover Trent. I think, I think a busy Kanate is a good Kanate. I don't think Kanate is great when he's idle and then there's one one or two things where he has to focus on. I think when he's busy and active, he's he's monstrous. You know what I mean? And I think we're going to see the best season from him so far next this season. But Trent, for me, I think he's just he's just, he's like a he's like classical music in in the midfield. It's just classical music, and I feel like we've got to play him there. We've got to play him there. So whether it's the, the um, the pivot or just making him a midfielder, we've got to play him there. Um, so for me, I, I think he's a midfielder, man. He's a midfielder that might go to right back. But I loved him in that. And when you watch what he's doing for England, of course it was like, you know, small team. <clears throat> but I'm telling you, I can't see him not doing that against anybody, if I'm honest. Them pings, bro. 
You know what I mean? He's, and he's clutch. Like, he can get you a last minute free kick, a last minute goal, whatever, bruv. That's, we're talking Steven Gerrard type of, type of yeah. performer. Kojo, he said the I, word. I'm not, I'm not saying the same, but I'm just saying, you know, in the 90th minute when you need that screamer, do you get me? Like, he, he's got it in his locker. Let's, let's have it right. I was watching the, um, Charity Shield um, community. Sorry, that's my age, Charity Shield. <laughs> <laughs> so I was watching the um, the Community Shield right, when we beat Man City at the start of the, start of the season last year. Screamer! Screamer! And, and you know what? He was in the midfield um, um, area of the pitch, you know, bro. That was day he, one. He, I think he did it again in a league game as well from like, was it Bournemouth, I think? Literally from the same spot he, he patted it again. Spot, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you, he could give us 10-15, bro. He could give us 10-15 if he's in the middle. I'm telling you guys. So for me, midfield, Klopp has to find that, that, that role that makes sense where he's in there most of the time. He is the worst defender in our team. Let's just have it right. But defending... <laughs> But, but but defending from the middle is very different from defending on the wing, as Vinicius mm. really told us. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, I think he had the most interceptions in the Premier League in the last seven games or whatever when he moved, that when he moved into that midfield role. And interceptions are a prevention. You're not even waiting to have to make the tackle. You're cutting it out before it even becomes a problem. That's a big asset to have in that midfield. He, so got people behind you. Do you know what I mean? But right back, bro, you make a mistake. That's a goal. Mm. Yeah. Hey, and and I, you know what? I'm not uh, even though he's my guy, Joe Gomez, bro. Like, I, 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 for me, for me, that's going to be my next question. If he plays right back all season, I think we're going to see a good defender. I think we need he needs to play every single week. I don't think this this guy that can jump in and out. You know, I, I've been critical, but it's been unfair on him. He don't know when his next game is, and I mm. feel like this season if we don't get a right back and we play him, providing he don't get injured. He could have a really good season. We could have a whole new player on our hands. But I mean, he has to play consistent football. And he's and he's quick enough. He's quick enough. He's strong enough. But consistent football it helps helps everybody. Mm. So Kojo, just side drift before I come to you. Yeah, just yeah. sticking with Joey G quickly. Mm. Would you then not buy a right back if you're moving Trent into midfield? And would you give the trust to Joe Gomez? Yeah. And uh, listen, we gave him a five-year contract. How he mm. earned that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I bro, I don't know. I got married. All right, let me let me show you your family. Bless you. Know, you know, you know, but like, but like for me, I feel like he should. You've given him a five year contract, use him then. Let's use him now. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Let's use him. Um, I don't know who the cover would be. Um, because I know Ramsey's gone. Um, because I saw him at pre season and then and then he went to Preston yesterday, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so for me, like, I'll I'll play him. I'd play him if they're gonna go and um, and and four at the back. Then I I'd play him. I play him. I play him ahead of um, what's it called? Do you know what I was thinking though? Do you know what I was thinking before Flacco decided to do one? Remember, Fabino used to play right back. You know, I knew you were gonna say that. Fabino used to play right back. That's all I'm saying. And if you're talking about shoring up the defense. He would have been a good option just to kind of slide there. Do you know what I mean? For a couple of games or whatever. All but right, let me let me ask you a question then. Martinelli versus Fabinho, would you be comfortable with that battle? Yeah, because it's here with, with You're Fabinho. You're lying. You're lying. Because it's here. It's here. Sometimes I don't think he'll be charging in and diving in like, like Trent was doing. Do you know what I mean? I think he'd give himself space, but I think a lot of it's in the brain, bro. You can have, you can have all the... Martinelli with space though, Carl. I'm not gonna lie. Fabinho's legs, they, they ain't the quickest anymore, bro. <laughs> could be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it could be ugly, bro. <laughs> I ain't full of common sense all the time. You get me? <laughs> I'm thinking Vinicius and Flacco. I, I that, didn't oh, want to say his name, bro. That's why I went Martinelli. <laughs> I went Vinicius Light. I went Vinicius Light. Oh, Vinicius geez. Zero. Like I didn't want to prove. But I do agree that he's more intelligent and he might play the he might play the role different. I do agree with that though. I do, you know what I mean? Just yeah. on Fab though. Let's see. Do you know what it is with Flacco? Yeah, it's it's his it's his haircut. When he came in and man had four patch at 23. Every like he is, and you know what is you know he's had one bad season, but we are we've been talking about him like he's 38, you know, bro. Let's be honest. Let's let's be real. <laughs> 
looking at Liverpool. That man are moving to him. Man had one bad season. I won't move to him, but he's been there for 10 years. And yeah, it's disgraceful, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's disgraceful. Look, top left. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 I know it's my time now, isn't it? So let's move on to Fab because one of the things you both mentioned was Trent and his interceptions. For me, that is one of the most underrated parts of Fabinho's game, or was the underrated part of his game. Everyone used to think of like the crunching tackles against Barcelona or Man United or Arsenal. The reason why Flacco was so instrumental to our team is because midfielders and attackers could really get to Virgil and whoever his partner was because Fab used to just marshal that whole area he really had to make tackles he would just intercept things and then get play moving again we didn't see that from him last season I have been very vocal saying I love Fab but I think we have to let him go obviously we had this bid come in Klopp said he was untouchable a couple of weeks ago this bid's come in he wants to move to Saudi Kojo I know what Drifty's view is I point I think I know what your view is Fabinho do you think we could have got the best out of him again if he stayed. I feel like we would have got a good... I think we would have, we would have got a good season out of him because we will never know because we've got two young midfielders who are hungry, who are going to do a lot of running for us and they would have been doing it in front of him, do you know what I mean? And we'll never know now because it's like... I don't like the fact that everything he's given us, one bad season and... Do you know how much people in our squad have had a couple of seasons that were terrible, bro? And yeah. they're still here. Let's, let's let's be honest, they're still here and they've not been as impactful as Flacco was in remember Flacco took, took about maybe six months to get into our team. And and, yeah. and when, when he did get in, but he was in. He was in. So it's like everyone was bad last season. Everybody. I don't understand why he took so much of it. And I understand that he's in a pivotal position in the team. But but one see one bad season don't um don't don't make me go throw you in the bin, bro. Do you know what I mean? Because because of the right. level you've given us at the top, there's no way that one bad season is throw you in out at, at 29. And then you've got these two new workhorses that are going to come in and, and do a job for us and give him protection. Give him protection. It, but, but that season when he played defence for us because everyone was injured, he was blinding at the back. I feel like yeah. this this feels like Genie Ronaldo. This what this... This exit feels like Genie. Genie left and said that the fans turned on him and the fans weren't um, and didn't support him. Through the, he got blamed for everything. And I feel like that's what we're doing with Flacco. And I feel like, don't be surprised if he goes away and does a one, one rude boy interview. About, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He didn't feel appreciated. No one's inviting him to the dance no more. Like, <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? The pastor ain't picking it up from him no more. You know I mean? like, <laughs> it's all gone left. You get me? No one ain't answering the call because for me, as football fans, we've got to be very careful about um, 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 saying things in emotion. And it's all right to have emotion in the moment, but, but also know who you're talking to. This person has loved us for five, six years, and man has one season that's terrible, like everyone else did that year. Let's have it right. Mm. And and, with, and he's out the door. So for me, I feel like the fact that Klopp, because I think Klopp loves Fabinho, I think the yeah. fact that he's willing to let him go, my personal opinion is, an assumption is, they've had a conversation. Had a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Raj, you <laughs> Raj, this is what it did, Jiffy. All right, cool. They've had a conversation. And he's asked him, do you think you can go on? And maybe he said no. Maybe maybe his legs are all shot. And he goes, okay, cool. Well, there's an honest conversation I had, and he's going to go and play in Summer Bay. (laughs) 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 Uh, All right, so Drift. I, mm. I know, and, and Koji, you did do a very good job of hiding. That was aimed at me. I know it was aimed at me. <laughs> like, so, and that's why I put it on this one to make sure you're yeah. listening, bro. <laughs> no, oh, no, I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about what I said, though? What do you think? No, so, again, I'd, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I'd like to think I've not been disrespectful to Fabinho. I, I appreciate everything he's done. I love Fab. I think he's the best DM 
at Liverpool that I've seen in my lifetime. The reason why I'm saying Fab out of the midfield, though, is because I think his is one of the most pivotal positions. I think you look at Thiago and he's not a player. He's a player that has been ravaged by injuries, but we know on his day he's world class and he's our best midfielder. Henderson, I'd have kept because of leadership and the homegrown. Again, you're right. It's nothing to do with necessarily on field. One had to go if we're going to bring in someone of a high high level. And for me, it would have been Flacco. And the reason I said Flacco, it was last season. It was a few games that did it for me. It was, it was the game against Brighton in the FA Cup where he did that late challenge and he, he almost broke the guy's ankle. And again, it's, this was one of the reasons I love Fab because he did that and it wasn't a, oh, don't give me a red, don't give me a red, but don't give me a yellow. It was a, I deserve a red. I obviously can't snitch on myself. And you saw his head was gone for the rest of the game because he was more concerned with the person's well-being. I love that about him. But the game that did it for me was the Southampton. I know it was a dead rubber. There was nothing to play for. But when I'm seeing random people just running past my midfielders and he can't even run or catch them to trip them up, that's a problem. I'm not I'm not saying you have to hunt a man down and win the ball back. Players that we want to sign. You mean random players like that? No, this wasn't even Lavia, bro. This was some <laughs> random we didn't even know. <laughs> like I still don't know his name now, not even to, to disrespect him. But like, if... If I'm playing in a game and I run away from someone and they can't they can't catch me to even trip me up, you know how much fun I'm gonna have in that game because I'm I'm just gonna have no can't fear. Can't catch and... you or didn't want to, bro. He couldn't, bro. He tried to catch you. What's he gonna just... pull a hamstring catch a man on the last day of the season? It don't mean that, <laughs> bro. Because you're the DM, bro. Remember, I yeah, played. Yeah, it is what it is, bro. No, like drip, we're not no, even drip. playing for anything. I played DM. Shall I tell you the worst feeling in the world? You played striker. The worst feeling for you is missing a one-on-one, right? Well, the, the worst, worst feeling would be spending the whole of my summer holidays nursing a hamstring injury, bro. That's what <laughs> the worst part. <laughs> for me, as a DM, the worst thing that can happen is a man beats you in midfield and just leaves you for dead. Yeah, and you, they, you, and you're no. just seeing his back. How they beat they beat all three of them in midfield. Whoever it was, they yeah, was but he's the one that shouldn't be getting it, though. I, I, I hear you, but do you know what it is? Pull it into context. Everyone's confidence was terrible all season. Everybody. I hear there it. Too many horrible midfield performances throughout the whole season. And yeah. it's not started by winning the Community Cup. No Diaz. No Jota. Like, we're, yeah. we're, we're judging players when when our Arsenal um, was stripped from us for most season. And when we got everybody back, seven in a row. Yeah, we look um, better. It should have been no way. Listen, I, I watched you know, all last season, yeah? And I, you know I love you guys, yeah? Yeah. But think about the conversations you had from 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 middle of the season to the end of the season of, ah, oh, forget top four. Top four's done. Top four's done. bro. we had no business being fifth. Yeah. Mm. We had no business as the same players, bro, that once the brotherhood came back and everyone uh, was fit again, we showed glimpses of, hey, like this is this is what can go on, and I'm saying we've got new energy. We've got new energy. We're buying new energy, and um, I'm, I'm very excited. I think maybe if crops, I'm thinking about all the signings that crops made. I, I'm trying to think of one that was terrible. Maybe Minamino, but even that, we've still got a little something out of him. But Klopp mm. don't sign dead players, bro. Rarely, very he, rarely. He don't, he don't, he don't sign. I'm, and, and, and people want to talk about Nunes. Just curious, isn't it? <clears throat> I mean, oh, well, well, I mean, but you know what? What, I don't he want does, to mention what he knows is a dud. What does he do? He gets rid. Mm, usually, he, yeah. he's militant in the transfer. So, so when people are talking about all these things, you always see me in the comments. In club, we trust, bro. We got. He is the equalizer, bro. Fair. Club football. That's that's when I start worrying, bro. That's all right. When I start worrying. Let's stick with club then. There we go. Because again, <laughs> you want to do this. <laughs> Oh shit! Let's speak about Klopp. I agree with everything you said. He's the equaliser, but I personally think last season he had a bad season. Yeah. Do you think if he has another bad season, we have to start? Or, in fact, I've said I've given him to December. Do you give him the full season? Do you have a time scale on it? Or are you just like, I'm clopping no matter what? Jurgen Klopp will never get sacked from Liverpool. Never. 
So, so whatever taste you got in your mouth, Cal, about December, <laughs> I don't know. What you got I don't know what you got planned for January, man. Said it. Oh. <laughs> my kind of energy is I read a lot of autobiographies and football players. Hmm. That's what I do. I read it because as fans, we want to know why you're not performing. But when I read Harry Hughes, but when I read Robbie Fowler's but when I read we people go through real life. Yeah yeah. People go through real life. Look at the whole Deli Alley situation. Trust me. Yeah. People go through stuff but as fans we don't care. And I feel like at some point we're allowed to not care because we pay our money. We just want to be entertained. But but if we really love the club, we've got to love everything that's going on with our players on and off the pitch. And we've got to be there for them as fans in, in, in the toughest of times. And that includes the manager. With everything that this man's giving us, it's like it's like you and your missus, right? And, and, and you know, you, you've been dating, you have a good day. And then, and then the child comes in. And for about 12 months, bro, you know what I mean? You ain't getting nothing, you get me? <laughs> it's facts, yeah. it's facts. Yeah, you didn't, eh? Yes. Did you know Did you? Did you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but you know how, how it was. We're going through a little period of time where things have to shift. We're, we're yeah. in a transition, right? You've got to kind of give a patience. Klopp, if Klopp left Liverpool, Bro, I don't think you don't be doing shows for two weeks, bro. Let's have it right. <laughs> you, you wouldn't even know where to look next. Where would you go after you had the clock right yeah, I now? Don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Are you listening, Joe? Where? <laughs> where would you go? You would be a bold man. <laughs> where would you go? You don't even know where you go. So the worst thing, listen, as long as we've had clock, and this is the calmest I've been as a Liverpool fan. That as long as we had club, I've, I, whenever anybody leaves, I'm the equalizer is our manager. If we ain't got Pep, we got Jurgen Klopp. The one that everyone calls number one is scared of number two, bro. Think about that. So I'm saying he's at Liverpool, he's embedded in our system. We've got to trust that he gets it right. Again, some people will have different opinions on the Nunes signing, the Minamino signing, and, and the carriers thing. But come on, look at the quality that he's brought in. And, and, and this is what I said in the comments the other day. My only thing with our club right now, and Jurgen Klopp, and it may be about to happen, yeah, and shut me up. But And I tried to put it in the comment the other day, like, when was the last time we signed a world-class footballer at the peak of his ability? When was the last time? Just Thiago, I'd say. Thiago, that's it. Even, no, but he, again, he wasn't at the peak of his ability. We didn't sign him when he was at Barca. We signed him when he was um, not really needed at Bayern Munich. And, and even then, he's not really come and given us much, really, because of his injuries. But I'm talking about that. The last time was Torres. I don't oh. think Torres was world class when we signed him. I think he was close. Well, I think he, he was he the close. Yeah, but he was a he was a striker that everyone was talking about. Realistically, yeah. he, he might have gone to Madrid or something like that. As as, as normally, yeah, I, I was I was shocked him. we got him. I was so we, shocked we got him. Yeah. When was the last time we signed? Like, <laughs> we always sign build projects. We always do that, and I feel like Alisson might. Alisson might be one. Alisson. Alisson goes under the radar. Do you know what? Alisson, and even to a certain degree, I think everybody knew what Van, Van Dijk was going to do. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I feel like we need <clears throat> one of those men because big clubs, like Man United, funny enough, you know, they sound very big, very big players, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but and it, does, it hasn't always worked out for them. But for me, I feel like as a big club, we need to get back into that side of the market. You can't always have build projects. And I feel like whoever's going to play five has to be established. Mm. And just, ju just quickly, for every single person in the whole community who's clop out, I hope you was listening very closely to what Cole Joe just said. I want you to hold that. That's all I want you to do. I want you to hold that. 
because I couldn't have said it better myself. The ridiculousness of Klopp out has wound me up more than I think anything has in recent Liverpool history. Like, I just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So. No, we, we are, we are. I think Liverpool uh, have the most emotional fans on the planet, number one. No, Arsenal, that's Arsenal. Arsenal, bro. Arsenal, that's Arsenal too. That's us, bro. We are on every poll. When I watch a Sky, Sky, every poll <laughs> online. Think about this. Liverpool fans got Jordan Henderson on the cover of FIFA, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe anyone else was voting? <laughs> Yeah, that was us. We that love was. it. We love I'm, a poll. We love a I'm, competition. I voted twice <laughs> still. I voted twice. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to remember if I voted. I think I did. I can't I remember. Twice. My, bro, my bro, bro, had a, my proper account. My player of the year, they was like, yeah, he's a great character. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, bro. Where's the... We, they never talk about his football. Never. Mm, never. True. And I'm thankful for everything he's done because he's been, he has been played a big part. But we need we need people. What 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 are we gonna be like <clears throat> if our captain can actually ball? Well, we balled we... out the year he's player of the season. Remember, he was actually Liverpool player. Was it eight nineteen twenty? He was actually that's, Liverpool player of the season. Drift, that's the year that I'm talking about, bro. Think, show me one interview where he won that, and everyone's talking about his ability on the pitch. I can't Ooh. even remember. That's what I can't do. remember. They're talking about they're talking about his character. You listening, Drew? Don't up. try it, bro. <laughs> Get me. If I win comedian of the year and they talk about, yeah, man, we like his outfits and he's dressing. <laughs> <laughs> he's dressing, bro. What's going on? Hey? Where's the jokes? Where's the jokes, bro? You know what I mean? He's got a nice beard. What are you talking about? <laughs> what about my bars? <laughs> So <laughs> <laughs> you don't give me this. I've been in the comments for time. <laughs> <laughs> so another player that's come under a lot of criticism this season, or the season just gone, Virgil Van Dyke. Mm. Now, I don't think anyone was calling for Virgil Van Dyke to be sold, but I think people have been calling for him to change his attitude, but also for us to bring in someone that can legitimately challenge him, or for Klopp to basically say to him. You, you 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 keep acting up and you you dropped. What's your thoughts on Virgil? Do you think he can get back to near what his peak was? I don't think he'll ever get back to his peak because his peak was almost immaculate. But do you think he can get anywhere close to that again? And do you think he's that centre back that can lead us through this transition? Man, I think he can definitely lead us through the transition if he if he commits a bit more. Um, I saw an interview. I can't remember who it was with. Might have been talk sport, but they were saying that after his injury, he has been less committed to tackling. Yeah, and 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 he feels like there's a player there who is worried about being injured again as he as he engages in 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 defensive. So I think he's he's fired to kind of just be all uh, methodical and kind of just be like, okay, let me be smart about my defending over. Let me show my pace because when he goes, when the acceleration goes, I don't know anyone in the Premier League that 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 can um that can stop him. I, I, I or, or get past him when he's committed, but he just doesn't commit as much. And we we're we're partly to blame on this whole Rolls Royce thing. Yeah, mm. that, that's cool for some games. You get me, but sometimes you gotta engage. Sometimes you gotta get some yellow cards, bro. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta get a red. I don't. I don't see the uh, the aggression um, and, and the dominance that used to be there. And again, football is also a mental sport. Yeah, <clears throat> for me, have clearly taken a toll on Verge, and he's not defending the same way as as I feel that that, that we're used to seeing. Nobody in the Premiership for me. Every time I see him on the pitch, I think how did, every every strike I'm like, how even uh, Erling Haaland? How did he get past you? That's what I expect from Virgil. How did you let my man get past you? Because you're, you're strong, you're tall, you're, 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 you've got pace, you're a smart footballer. How did you get past you? And now, I, it's now, it's like when it happens, it's like, okay, well, this is the version that we've got now. So this season is going to tell us everything that we need to know. Because last, last year you could write it off because everyone was kind of bad. But this season, mm -hmm. we'll decide if Klopp's going to... You said give him till December. Klopp will give Vir Virgil van Dijk till December to decide whether he needs to find a replacement. 
Do you agree with that drift? I definitely think this will be the season we find out everything we need to know about Virgil, 100%. I, I personally think, and again, people think I'm being stupid, but when I say this, and it's just a theory, I think he was worried about being injured and missing another tournament for Holland because he missed the Euros and the World Cup's the biggest tournament in the world. I think he was brilliant in the World Cup. Then I think he came back to Liverpool, saw there's nothing to really play for and wasn't asked. That's wrong. Mentally wise, that's wrong. But a player who is worried about being injured, thinking, why am I going all out when there's nothing to play for? is still understandable on a human level. I won't accept it from a Liverpool level, but on a human level, it's understandable. So I think it was a bit of a mentality thing with him, the same way I think it possibly was with Trent, Flacco and a few others. I would definitely, if I was going to put money on it, say he'll be a lot more Virgil now and the season moving forward than he was the season just gone. Because he was coming off the back of Defender of the Year or being in the team of the year, remember? Yeah. Because after about the first three or four months, once he found his feet from his injury, in the quadruple, you know, trying to win season, he ended up being in the team of the year. Like, he was brilliant in the last six months of that season. So I think it had a lot to do with World Cup and mentality. And I don't know, last season, from a mental point of view, for a lot of our players, I think was just weird. A lot of them, do you know what I mean? I think it's very easy to, as Kojo was saying, forget they're humans. There was, a, there was just a lot going on. Like, even the disappointment of not winning the quadruple. I think people downplayed that effect it had on the team. We went all the way to the last week and lost it all in the last week almost. That's hard to take, man. That's you know hard what? to take. You know, you, you, you've raised something that I completely forgot about. How many players have played every game in a season before? Goalkeepers no. normally the only ones really that do. No, that, I'm not, no, I'm talking about every game in the calendar that, that's possible in the calendar. I'm talking about every final and then and then missing out on the league by what a point or whatever it was. We're the, we're the only ones. How oh, oh, people, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people have every possible yeah. game we played in the bro? And then and then you got a World Cup that's in in January. Phys we're talking about Flacco physically. Do you know how draining that is? And you have to remember, whenever Virgil came back, he's always rushed back. Mm. He's always rushed back. We need you to play now. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it takes its toll. I don't care who you are, it takes its toll. And I think we've got to give them grace. We want them to be in every game of the season, possibly, and go to all these finals. But we don't want to accept what comes with that. We don't want to accept that some players are going to be le um, a leggy. Some players are going to be tired. Some good players are going to be disappointed because they could have made the history and they, and they failed. Like mm. all of these things, we, we want them to get there, and then, and then when it does happen, go again. This ain't FIFA. You can't make a man <laughs> run a hundred miles per hour <laughs> and, and expect his bars not going to go down, bro. You get me mm. out of time. And I think this season, I think that we're going. I'm, I'm very excited about this season for all of them, mm. and I think Virgil, like you said, Jeff, is definitely going to come back to his. To, to the best version of himself currently, whatever that looks like. Um, and we'll see. They've all had sufficient rest. Maybe some have some haven't. But with rest, bruv, when I see the the names coming up, when I when I see them on the training pitch and I'm like, these, these names, oh bro, I'm telling you, I want everyone to sleep on us this year. I want them to. I want them to, bruv. I'm telling you. The, Hey, yeah, Kojo's gassing me up, you know. Yeah. I know gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know a, a dead Liverpool team. We know a dead Liverpool team. We, yeah. We have so long. But when you see the names, we, you know what? Have you noticed? We don't really mention our attackers. And, and there's something I want to mention later on, but I'll talk about that when you're ready. But uh, we've got a very good score. All we need to do is get, I think, two midfielders and a defender. Two midfielders and a defender. Bro, we are good to go. I'm telling you, arrested Liverpool is dangerous. Dangerous. I agree with that. I agree First with that. First off for three years, man. Yeah. Let's speak about attack, though, because you're right. No one's really <laughs> spoken about attack up until today. With talk of Lewis, well, kind of today, yesterday slash today, but talks of Lewis Diaz. Firstly, I don't think he's going to go. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. If Liverpool let him go. It better be because they're going to go and get Killian. That's the only thing I'm accepting. Right, well, do you know, yeah, Summer Daily News show that I did on that. That's what I said. I was like, unless you get me Killian or Craver from Napoli, don't or, entertain or me. Or Vinicius. That's, that, that's the only people I'm yeah, accepting. So yeah, do you know what? Yeah, those are the only three. Anyone else, with, respectfully, I don't want to hear. But you speak <laughs> about the attack. 
Top guy as well, you know that. Now he's gonna go. He's gonna go. Top guy Saudi Arabia as well, but he's. He must be setting this up. If, if they so Diaz, bro, oh my god, I'll be. He'll be mad. He'll be like, mad. I but I don't think the player wants to go either. Yeah, I don't think. He's, that's, I don't that's, think he's so, Kojo, you speak about the attack, and you're right, not many people are speaking about the attack. Again, I've been quite vocal. I do think we need someone to come in and deputise and compete with Salah. Apart from that, I think we're stacked, though. Our attack, are you happy with it going into the new season? I am. I think we have the best arrangement of forwards in the world right now. OK, talk on it. People talk, in the back, I'll are you say, listening? I, 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 I'll, I'll say this. Because <laughs> I think Sabosla is going to be used in the middle or the right. When 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 uh, Salah goes to uh, African Afcon, I think Sabosla is going to be on the right. Yeah, I think I think that's where they and then they might push Trent the, in 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 that space as well. But again, we don't know who else is being signed. Um, I want to start with my main concern for next season. Yeah, mm. to me, the best finisher at Liverpool is Diego Jota. Tell him again. I would put my house, my kid. My everything on a one on one for Diego Jacques to score that goal. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it on Salah. Agreed. As all the goals Salah scores, I, I, he misses so many. Yeah. And with, we have so many chances in games that it, it's not seen, but Salah misses a hell of a lot of sitters. Mm. Yeah. He misses a hell of a lot of sitters. But Diego Jacques to me is Liverpool's best finisher, bro. He scores mm. headers. He's got, mm. he's, AC is, he, mm. you know, he's short and kind of gets in between the defenders. Left foot, right foot. Like, mm. the the last, remember, he, the last seven games, he was our best player for me. Him and Curtis Jones, yeah? Like, he, J Jota in our team is, um, I'm telling you, I know Gakpo is Fabinho's replacement. I know he is. I can see that already. That's mm. why I've said in the comments sometimes about maybe finding a space for him in the eighth position. or Oh! Or <laughs> yeah. oh. The reason I say that is because he's got he's got long range shooting. He he runs he runs like crazy. So closing down, he's on it, and and he can play. Sorry, finger slip. My finger slip. My bad. Left or, or, or the middle. Or right. I'm just saying to to fit everybody in. But I see a situation where if Diego Jota by January isn't our isn't playing regular football, he's not injured. He will leave us, bro. And that is my main concern for our attack. Diaz, for me, automatic left. Um, Salah, automatic right. I think it's the middle. Nunes. Nunes don't start in my team. Die. Yeah? This, listen, you need a squad to win titles. He will have a part to play. But all really, right. We can't change from how we've had all these short little men up front. And now we've got this big U that changes everything. <laughs> And I'm saying, even though um, Gakpo's tall, he still fits into the mould of what Fabinho was doing. And I think the only Firmino, person... Firmino. Um, um, yeah, Fabinho, yeah. I think, I think the only person who um, is alternate to how the rhythm of how we've been playing is Nunes. And I think Nunes is a baller. I think he's got to score goals. But, it, but in a position where there's less pressure on him, might get the best out of him right now. Maybe down the line, he'll come and be that, that, that main player for us. But for me... Diego Jota has to be up front, bro. I, I don't know how they're going to figure it out, but that guy, he scores goals for fun. And you can't substitute goals for anything else, bro. You need someone that you can rely on. And a full season, he will get 20, 30 goals, I'm telling you. If you went to Barcelona, he start and banging goals. Yeah, we, We've right. got to know the player that we've got on our hands, bro. <clears throat> A lot of people sleep on Jota. There was Jota out this season. Jiff, remember that? Me? Yeah. Jiff, remember when you said nothing winds you up more than the Klopp outers? Mm. Nothing winds me up more at the moment than people. When I see, like, predicted 11s or favoured 11s and Jota's never starting. So I have a gap poor Nunes. And I think to myself, what have those two done, respectfully, to start ahead of Jota? And they yeah. haven't done anything yet. Well, like, well, well I, I think there's a good argument that Gakpo is our best finisher. I think Gakpo system wise. I, I, I think there's an argument. No, I, I mean like um, you know, like like who's the better finisher? Even though I probably agree, it probably is just slightly jar. I think there's an argument for Gakpo though. His finishing is, is brilliant. His finishing is right, please. 
He finished on his right foot. We ain't seen nothing header wise or nothing with the left foot. All right, yeah, I get, yeah, I get, yeah. Jota's the more complete forward, yeah. I, yeah, I get what you mean in that regard. Yeah, Jota's brilliant season. all round, yeah. There's a game last season where Klopp played Gapo in the middle, yeah. Or I think a couple of times he yeah. played him in to you. We're talking about having options, yeah. And that's what I think we're going to have. I think he will use Gapo in the middle sometimes. But that boy loves to run. He can, he can finish from, from distance. He can score and tap in. Gapo mm. for me. Such a, he's such a baller. But he's I think he's going to be our best player, you know. I, I think this season Gapo will be our best player. I just, there's something about it. I, I, I can just smell an absolutely brilliant um, season for him. I just can. I, 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 think he's, I think he's got so much to his game, but not at the sacrifice of Jota. And again, Gakpo, even if Gakpo played number nine, he started scoring bare goals, right? It's still for me, I have to have Jota in my team. We sleep on this guy. We don't not understand this run. If you look at stats, I'm sure you'll see a madness in terms of goals. He scores goals, bro. And he's relentless. And he's in, and, and he's he's just clinical in the box. That last goal against Tottenham, do you think I didn't? I knew that was getting in. Yeah. If that was Salah, he would have missed it. I'm telling you, he would have missed it. I'm telling you. Well, yeah, yeah. Salah loads of goals because he gets opportunities. And I love him. But I'm talking about when you get one opportunity, I need it to fall for Diego Jota, bro. That's he what is... Cal said on that game. Like, Cal was like, that's the only guy that could have fallen to and he would have put yeah. that in. Yeah. He's that guy. Absolutely. He is. He, bro, I, I, I don't want us to have a situation where Xabi Alonso, where we don't know what we got and we let a man yeah. go. Right. And, oh, oh my God, he used to play for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? We can't be doing that. Jota is my main starter, bro. Figure the rest out however you want, bro. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I think this year, I think the rotation is going to be beautiful. I think they're all going to really support each other. Just as long as there's a good rotation and we've become unpredictable again because we haven't been unpredictable for a while. Last mm -hmm. two years, we haven't been unpredictable. But yeah. but for me, yeah, man, I think, I think I'm, a, I'm very excited. I think we've got hella goals. I just need us to not get injured. That's all. Yeah, that's. I think that's the main thing yeah. for us. I think we we need a bit of luck. We haven't had much luck in the last few years. We need a season where we do have luck because every team needs it. You look at the Man, Man City had luck this season, just gone. They won the treble. They were excellent. You still look to that Inter game in the final. If we watched the final together, mm. but on another day, Inter scored two, three goals and win that game three one or three two. So. Yeah. You you have to have luck. We've seen it. Even when we won the league in Champions League, we had luck in those in those yeah. runs. We had you had moments. That's the thing again. when Mane scored, that, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like in the yeah. ninety sixth minute or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah there's Aston Villa and the Arigi penalty Arigi against the Leicester. Arigi <clears> when the ball's bouncing off the post and Pickford don't know what to do, and Arigi's there knocks it in. Like those yeah. are the moments when you know. So Kojo, before we let you go. Yeah. Your prediction for Liverpool, or should I say your expectation for Liverpool this season? Because it's hard to predict because we've still got a few weeks left of the window and stuff. And we yeah, don't know what's going on with players and that. What's your expectation next season? Um, I think for me, challenging. I mean, Champions League minimum. Champions League minimum, which I don't, I can't see being a problem, honestly. I think the way the transfer is going at the moment, um, I'm, I'm, I'm still confident in my team. I think, you know, there's a lot of factors to take in and, People will call them excuses, which they're entitled to do, um, and because that's what probably they do with their team and we were doing with us. I expect us to be first or second next year. With, every, wow. with every, all things considered, all things considered, um, I trust the manager that we got, and he's angry, mm. and I love an angry clock. <laughs> yeah, love, I love an angry clock. And maybe last year, you know, he wasn't angry, and you know, you know, so, you know, his, his favoritism did get called into question at times. And there was a game where he just subbed everybody. Everybody was on the bench. I can't remember what game it was. Everybody was on the bench. And we mm. won that game and he brought uh, Curtis Jones in and a couple of other men. And he's not afraid to do that. And I think as long as the players know he's not afraid to do that and everyone's got... And, you know, Van Dijk can't just feel like I'm going to play the game anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not on mm. that. If he's not playing well, he's got to be dropped. Yeah. No, I mean, it has to be about the team now. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So I expect first or second, people can call me delusional. But but I, I I know when my team's not good and I know, and I know when we are good and I think uh, you know beginning of last season when when Diaz was on fire got injured. Mm. Oh, we, we, we didn't have him all yeah we didn't have him most of the season. That had a six months in, 
I'm excited about him, but I'm looking forward to seeing. So I think Sabozla is going to be a ball of Oh, rest. that's the one. I think he is going to, and he's one of them man there that I think we need. Them man there that will kick you in your shin and then be like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's one of them man that will wind players up, yeah? Yeah, yeah because he's handsome as well. You get the man to start doing this on that. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? That right there. But, but you know what, yeah? Don't, I feel like McAllister could be one of our best players in the season because we needed a genie one out and I think we've got him. And he chips in with a few as well. McAllister, mm. don't sleep on McAllister, bro. Because it's like we signed him and it's like now we're talking about all this other stuff, but we got one hell of a ball in there, bro. Yeah, trust me. I, I actually think when we when we chop it up at the end of next season, I think we'll sit here and go, McAllister might be our best signing because of and it's unfair on Sabozlai, but because of his price tag, the expectation we have. I think you look at McAllister's price tag, we have a good expectation, but not an expectation of a Sabozlai. I think he'll, in my humble opinion, I think he'll end up being our best signing over the course of the summer. So mm. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Massive but Kojo, point. it's always a pleasure having you on. Have you got anything coming up that you want to share with the people? How can the people support you? You always support us, so it's the least we can do. No, yeah, so um, I've got a, a big show happening at the um, Roundhouse in Camden on the 6th of August. We're celebrating 20 years of Kojo's Comedy Funhouse. What well, you said, Jamaican independence, yeah? We see you, Kojo. We see you. <laughs> <laughs> we see you. Don't worry. We'll hold you up. We'll go, yeah, we got a top for you. Don't worry. We got... <laughs> That's the bumper clock, mate, isn't it? Uh, come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. No, I don't know what it is, you know. But, um, but yeah, I've got a big show out there around Southampton celebrating 20 years of uh, Kojo's Comedy Funhouse as part of the Roundhouse Comedy Festival, and we've got 20 black comics coming together just to showcase the black comedian in the UK. 20 comedians on one stage, never happened before. Do you know what I mean? Right. So it's a big lineup, everyone's gonna be coming out, doing their thing. You guys are more than welcome to come over. I'll see you guys yeah, down there. So yeah, go, go to the roundhouse.org, uh, I believe, um, and get your tickets, man. It's gonna be a crazy night. Yeah, make well, sure that, you do that, man. We, Me and Cal was down there last year, is your Christmas nah, it was, just, was it a Christmas special? I think it, really? it was a Christmas. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Might have been. Yeah, all and yeah, it was belly laughter, man. Belly, belly laughter. laughter. It was brilliant, man. Belly laughter. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. Kojo, can't thank you enough. Not just for doing this, but for the support you always show us, making time for us. Doesn't go unnoticed, and it's really appreciated, man. Thank you no so much, man. Nah, bless you, man. Bless, man. Bless. Do you have anything you want to say for the people before we take them out? Um. Nah, I just hope they were all listening to what Kojo had to say because I couldn't have said it better myself. For real, everything he said, yeah? <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> we said a little glitch in the Matrix, yeah? <laughs> but, but, yeah, mm, but, mm, yeah, mm, but, mm. <laughs> I, I'm talking specifically about the Trent abuse. I'm talking about the oh, yeah, yeah. out. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The stuff that suits you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, people, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you like the video, but most importantly, head over to the description and make sure you get tickets for Kojo's show as well. Believe you me. We've been there, we've gone to his shows, and he is brilliant. He'll have you laughing from beginning to the end. And as you see, he's a great guy and a support of the channel. So you know, people... we'll make sure the link is actually in the description for to, to the ticket master. Until yeah, until yeah, yeah, until the actual show. Yeah, let's do it. So, people, thank you so much. Until we see you next time, stay safe, stay blessed. We are coffee around people. Take care. Peace. <laughs>